Coding, the most in-demand skill in the world. Pays a lot, no degree needed. These guys say you should learn it. So you decide to learn it. What can go wrong? A lot. In fact, it is super painful to learn, but in this video, I'm here to give you a few painkillers by telling you how I would learn to code if I could start over. Now this video, it's not just based on my personal experience. I've taught a ton of people how to learn to code. Millions of views here on YouTube. I've taught people firsthand as a bootcamp teacher. I've even taught my girlfriend how to code. That means I've seen the mistakes thousands of developers make and I wanna help you avoid them, so consider subscribing. Now let's get into the structure of this video. Part one is the prerequisites for coding. You want these things before writing a single line. Part two is choosing one learning path out of the whole universe of coding. And part three is what to learn and what to ignore. Feel free to skip ahead to any given section. Let's start with part one, the prerequisites. These are foundational things that are gonna help you make the most of your time because focused time is extremely scarce. I'd recommend having five things from day one. First, the time plan, a block of space where you can learn every day. I recommend before work when your brain still has energy. I personally go fasted black coffee and you can probably get more done in one hour of this morning time than three hours of nighttime if you're anything like me. Two, a way to track your time. I recommend the tomato tracker. I actually have a free PDF for you below. You just draw a tomato for every 30 minutes you actually end up learning. Why is this important? Because you can actually measure how much time you are learning. Many people fall into the trap of feeling like they've been learning for three months, but they only spend one to two hours every week. So that doesn't really count. Number three, accountability mechanism. Tell your girlfriend, your friend, or a buddy who's also learning to code what your learning plan is and ask them to hold you accountable. If you're lucky, you can also find a mentor or coach. Usually gonna cost some money, but can be worth it. Number four, you wanna be creating tangible results as soon as possible. By tangible, I mean publishing your work at every stage, even if it completely sucks and is an exact copy of what's in a tutorial. Why? Because it makes things real. Beyond GitHub, I would even say create a personal website as soon as possible. It could be on a website builder like Webflow, which you could set up in just a few hours. Too many people wait to create a portfolio until they're applying for jobs. But the sooner you do it, the sooner you'll feel like a real developer. You can think of it as a living, breathing thing you add to and improve over time. Also, don't feel like these projects need to be original. You can completely steal them, just like this meme says you can. And if the projects you make today feel embarrassing in one month, that's actually what you want. Now, prerequisite number five is developing the tinkerer mindset. When I say tinkerer, I mean think of yourself like Leonardo da Vinci. You're messing around with your code, taking it apart, figuring out how it works. You're going to hit a lot of dead ends when you're learning to code. And sometimes you just have to reverse the car and drive around. And the longer you do this, the more you can start to build some really cool stuff. All right, we're finally ready to start learning to code almost, but we need to choose a learning path. You don't want to spend months going down the wrong path and then come back to where you started. So know this, there's multiple types of programmers and each one, you need a different set of skills. These sets of skills are also known as a stack. As far as stacks go, there are two and a half choices that are more popular than all the others. Most people either go with JavaScript, AKA frontend or Python, AKA backend. Personally, I recommend frontend just cause it's easier. Not JavaScript itself versus Python, but all the other stuff you need to learn with backend is much more challenging because it includes things like databases, scaling, telemetry, and the competition's pretty fierce in the job market. Compare that with learning HTML and CSS, the reason most of the code bootcamps focus on JavaScript. Now I said two and a half because within JavaScript, there's two types of developers. You have web app developers and website developers. Web apps are more customized. Think Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, completely unique and have a lot of features. Whereas websites are more like repetitive types of sites you see online. Think blogs, business websites, and even e-commerce sites. Main difference is web apps are usually built from scratch. Websites are usually built on a platform with a template. As for choosing which kind of JavaScript developer you wanna be, there's usually more long-term work for web app developers, usually more short-term or freelance work for website developers, but you can get on something called a retainer as a website developer. It means you're kind of on call and you get paid a fixed salary every month. It'd be a really sweet setup. Now the choice is not binary. Many website developers become web app developers, so don't stress about it too much. Okay, so we've talked about the prerequisites. We've talked about the end destination, which is sort of one of those three paths. Now how do we connect those two dots with a straight line and not a line that goes like this? Well, here's what you should learn and what you should ignore. The timeline sort of goes like this. Of course, you need to skill up on the basic syntax of your language. You can get that pretty fast with a basic course or YouTube tutorials. And through doing this, you'll start to absorb how programming logic works. By that I mean not just ifs and loops, but how all the pieces flow together. This is really just exposure therapy, watching some basic tutorials and watching people build projects and also doing coding challenges. Speaking of coding challenges, making a Code Wars account as early as possible is the move. It's a site where you can practice easy coding challenges and even the easy ones are gonna be too hard, but you can start reading other people's solutions. Now that thread of logic and doing challenges, you want to keep that running. Pretty early on, you want to start a second thread, which is building projects, which sounds intimidating, but don't try to build a project from scratch. Try copying a project first and then breaking it. Change little things and then eventually try to add a feature to it to make it your own. Remember, stealing isn't really a thing in programming. You can get in the project building flow state in that zone between completely copying something and that this is too hard feeling. 
right in the middle is where you want to be. Okay, you're making good progress. You're publishing some of those projects to your portfolio site. Now here's where the learning plan kind of forks. If you're going for website development, you want to start adding on a platform at this point, whether that's WordPress or Shopify. If you're going for web apps, you want to add on a JavaScript framework such as React, or if you want to go mobile, Swift, React Native, one of those. And then in the Python world, assuming you want to go back in web development, you want to add on Flask or Django, a web framework that actually allows you to build APIs and backends. Now, as your skills start getting better, a trap is waiting for you. You'll be tempted to jump to another language or jump from front end to back end and try to go full stack. Don't do it. You do not need to be full stack to get your first job. And I would say mastering either one or the other for at least a year before trying to jump over. This is in my opinion where a lot of boot camps get it wrong. They try to make you full stack. And while a bit of knowledge on the other side can be good, really just focus on one or the other. All that being said, you're gonna get to a certain point where you're ready to apply for a job. And I already kind of made a part two to this video. It's called the full-time developer roadmap. So I'm gonna put that on the screen now. Thanks for watching in the end. Really wish you luck in your learning plan. And if you want to avoid mistakes developers make when learning to code, consider subscribing. Hope to see you in the next one.